Hi, and hello everyone, I'm the Sneaky Stamp. Today is a how to effectively type in code on the program JGrasp. Little known fact, JGrasp, the lowercase j actually stands for Jagex, as JGrasp is a subsidiary of the main company, Jagex, creators of old school RuneScape. But that's for the next video. <laughs> Today is a tutorial on how to type in code and how to create programs, how to run program, if, then, well, how, I, will, loops, all of those things. So, what you need to do first is open up JGrasp. And I already did the first first step, first second step for you, first third step for you, because the first step is to open JGrasp. I already did the third step for you, which is to set up the, uh, the top part of the code is called the, br the the high tree branch, that's what it's called. It's called the upper tree branch. I already settled up the tree branch for you guys where you type in import right here. I'm gonna highlight it so you guys follow. As I know this is really important for a lot of the um, IT majors, IT majors, CS majors, IT majors, CS and IT majors. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight so it's easy for you guys to follow along. Import, first step. This whole importation line, it, I don't know how to, hold on. When you're typing in the import Javex swing Joption pawn, you need to, it, this essentially tells your program that once you want to run the program, it goes into your computer as a RAM drive, finds the online downloaded RAM that you did, and it extracts the contents of that RAM into this program so it can run. So you need to have this at the top of each of your programs you're doing in JGrasp to practice and get into those cybersecurity IT, security, government, defense, contracts. Next. So the second line, public class. Now you see this line is not important at all. All you need to do is type in public class and then the next space, it's just the file name. So you're gonna write whatever you want in the file name. I just put something random. I really don't, <laughs> it's just a joke, you know. So that will be, will synchronize automatically with the file name of your JGrasp. Now the third line, this is the really important one, public static void. You want to type that in English, not in any other language. So let me just give you a tutorial on how to type it. Public static void, then boom, you got that. Next, color will change. This is because the computer does not, rec does not recognize how to type purple into the words main string and args. It's kind of a complex IT kind of problem in the computer's monitor color frame. So don't worry about that. So you want to type in string, parentheses, string, box, args, other parentheses. Now, the actual meaning of public static void, what it means is when you run a program on JGrasp, it's going to, to get the electricity to run the program, it gathers up all the static that's built up inside of your PC, inside of your monitor, inside the little wires that are plugged into your computer. It gathers all that static, pulls it from the void, as you can see, let me highlight it for you guys, void, static. So it gathers all the public static void energy and it uses it to run the program. And then afterwards, you can type any, this is how you begin any kind of program you want. Like, let's say I wanna do a, um, the last thing that I had most previously at my uh, government contractor job, they wanted me to make an if-then loop to regulate missile silos, opening the lids, firing the missiles. So what I did essentially was I typed in if missile, okay, then you want to open bracket, enter. Then you have to type in the, the limits of the loop. So if I wanted, if the missile, if the command I typed in for the missile silo to open up was 476, I would type x equals 476. Then that would be the maximum distance that the silo can open without the lid crashing into the ground and destroying everybody beneath the silo. So I have to set a minimum. So y equals 1. One foot open. That is the least amount of space needed for the nuclear missile to get out of there. So then you quickly close the bracket and then type then so if, it's, if the number I type in is in between 1 and 476, the loop will then fire missile. Simple. And then, oop, I forgot to open a bracket right above it. Let me do that. 
there we go and then you close the bracket under public class which I'll highlight here public class there's a bracket at the top so you want to close that one before you finish your program and yeah that's how you do an if then loop and I could stop the video here but I want to just do another quick little mini mini tutorial within this mini mini tutorial it is let's say you have two missile silos that you're trying to regulate what you want to do is top left follow my mouse follow me Alex Jones look at this so you go new Java open up a second JGRASS which will show right here then you want to copy and paste everything you typed here enter and then, or copy and then paste it here. Now essentially what you have here is graphs, GRASP 7 and GRASP 8. These are two terminals, two different programs running at the exact same minuscule time millisecond. This is exactly what my boy up in the White House wanted me to do for him while working at the Pentagon. I got a missile silo in Kentucky I'm trying to regulate. Missile silo in Seattle I'm trying to regulate. I'm typing up this code so fast. I'm writing all these loops. This is how I did it. And I'm giving you the tips and tricks so you guys can get into that work too. Now, once you're ready and you think everything is good, you just got to hit this plus button. Not this, I'm sorry, the red running man. And then, oh, got to save the file. So just click save really quick. And as you can see here, accomplished fire, but no error lines were detected. That's really all that matters when you make a program. If it can complete, then no error lines are detected. It's perfect. What else do you want? Now, just so I can show you the two programs running together, both of them both are working. Let me just make a unique file name. 2018, add that on there. Click the running man on the second terminal. Save. If compilation failed, that's insignificant. All you need is the second part. No error lines were detected. And you can see JGRAS option complete. Both of them are working. So that was my tutorial on how to effectively write code in JGRASP. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully new videos and tutorials soon. See you later. Yeah!